Hey everyone, I'm Brugley, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Backrooms Entity 67, aka the Sanguine Festivus Virus. You all remember the partygoer entity, right? You know, these things, obviously. Well, it seems like they've been replaced with an even more dangerous entity, and one that looks absolutely terrifying, and one that behaves absolutely terrifyingly. And it's also far more destructive to people in the backrooms. I know all that just sounds like a grand old time, so let's get into the explanation, shall we? Entity 67, or the Sanguine Festivus, is a very spreadable and viral sickness that is wreaking havoc across all of the backrooms. Amongst the people inside of the backrooms, this virus goes by the name of the SFV or the Sanguine Festivus Virus. People that have been infected with this sickness have a bunch of different nicknames as well, like Festheads, Jovials, or Partygoers, and other stuff like that. And you'll see why they're called those specific names that involve like being happy and stuff in a second. But first, let's talk about where all this came from, because it seems pretty random. The first known account of this disease dates all the way back to the mid-1700s in the back rooms, and it seems like during that time, the rate of infection of this disease was way lower than it is now. It's almost like it's growing more and more as time passes, which is interesting. You might think that the 1700s seems like a really long time ago, but there's actually been people stuck in the back rooms for way longer than that, so it's really not too crazy. Now, let's talk about the behaviors and symptoms and that kind of thing of this sickness and how people act once they get infected with it. People who get fully infected with this disease past the point of help all have the following symptoms. They all suffer from, quote, maddening glee and ecstasy, end quote, because the disease can manipulate and change a person's hormone production in their brain. In simple terms, the disease makes people act and laugh hysterically. But not just laughing hysterically, they're constantly running around and screaming and just doing everything like really erratically all the time. And they seem to be viciously smiling, grinning, laughing, and just maniacally chuckling constantly. It's said that some people who get infected do it on purpose because to them, being happy and laughing maniacally is better than being stuck in the back rooms forever alone. But to be honest, I don't know, that's, that's pretty weird, I don't know. Because there are some people that purposefully infect themselves, they also have the idea that it's the best thing to infect other people as well so everyone can be as happy as them. And because of this hysteria and this mass craziness, the sickness spreads really fast and it's estimated that over 100,000 people have been infected with it. Now, after telling you all this, I'm sure you're wondering, you know, how can you avoid getting infected with a disease that turns you into an adrenaline-filled, maniacally laughing zombie type thing? You're actually more likely to see the results of one of these entities before you see the entity itself. You'll see things like crude drawings on the walls and crazy laughter and the smell of feces and rust and just nasty stuff. Those type of things are the warning signs that you need to look for when you're wandering deep into backrooms levels. Like I said, you're going to see those things first before you'll see one of the entities. But if you see all that stuff, you better not let one of the entities see you because they will not stop chasing after you until they detain and infect you via biting and scratching and that kind of thing. So do your best to avoid being seen by these entities. The biology of this disease and the people that are infected are also pretty simple, which makes it scarier kind of since it's so simple. It's transmitted via bodily fluids by getting into an infected one's bloodstream or mouth or nose or that kind of thing. This mainly happens through bites and scratches and spit. You can also get infected from eating food that has the liquid on it, so just watch out for that. And as soon as the transmission happens, you'll start to show symptoms within just eight hours of being infected. The first symptoms will be pretty simple things, like muscle cramps and lightheadedness and cold flashes and joint pain, and just overall, you won't feel too good. You, you'll know you're sick, you just don't know exactly how. Unless you got bit, of course. Then you'll obviously know how, because something bit you. After around a full 24 hours of these symptoms, the disease will then travel through your body and it'll wreak havoc. First, it'll go to your liver and your other organs, and it'll pretty much start changing your blood flow by diluting your blood to all your extremities and your skin as well. 
pretty much the disease hijacks your bloodstream to make it bad. At this point, you'll start to feel really stiff and weird and your skin will start to discolor itself and you'll get more and more pain in your arms and legs and your jaw muscle will start to hurt and grow and <laughs> and at this point also your palms will start to leak a certain liquid that i can't talk about on youtube because i'll get demonetized but that red stuff will be coming out of your palms and bones will sprout out of your hands and arms it's about to get gross so skip through it or don't watch anymore if you get squeamish but still surprisingly at this point of the infection you could still be saved like you aren't too far gone yet to be completely cured it's after two to three days of being infected like this with no treatment when stuff starts to get really really bad like really really bad you'll turn into a sickly gray color and you'll start to look really gross and shriveled and your bones will start to stick out of your arms and legs and your veins will become visible and your mouth will get huge and everything will just start to like morph and crunch and you, know, you get what i'm saying your brain is also hijacked at this point and is flooded with those dopamine and adrenaline rushes and their serotonin rushes as well this causes you to behave very aggressively and very erratic and you'll start to vocalize and scream and laugh constantly and just yell gutturally yell at the top of your lungs at this point you'll be running around like a madman screaming and yelling like an old call of duty zombie but it sounds like laughing and giggling and just screeching you'll also start to run around and you'll get worse and worse and worse and worse and you'll look more and more decayed and like a zombie and you'll just get worse over the years after a few weeks bones will start to stick out of your face and mouth and ears and eyes which creates this really weird smile like cut on the faces of the infected which makes them have another eerie just happy look to them and you'll start to go into jaundice and turn yellow and veiny and you'll just look really disgusting and sickly after this, you'll have about two to three years left of life before you fully succumb to the sickness. And the whole time in those two to three years, you'll be running around and screaming and laughing and just trying to infect other people that you see because in your brain, you think you're happy, even though obviously you're decaying and not happy. So if you come into contact with someone infected or something infected, you need to first slowly and quietly try to avoid the entity. Like do not approach the area. If you see anything, any of the warning signs that I talked about, like writing on the wall or smelling anything, run away as quiet as possible because these things will run full speed and chase you constantly and just scream and yell and it'll be really terrifying actually. Just walk the other way. If you do end up getting infected or if you end up eating something that's infected, you need to treat the virus as soon as possible so it doesn't take root and grow in you. You can treat the virus by drinking almond water or removing the layer of skin that got bit or scratched or just taking vitamins if you have them or you can also use bloodletting to remove it. But obviously, these are dangerous. So if you're going to try to heal yourself, get some help from somebody else that knows what they're doing. But the likelihood is you'll be alone. So good luck. So to summarize all the craziness that I just talked about, Entity 67, or the Sanguine Festivus, is a viral infection in the back rooms that spreads through bodily fluids. When you get infected, you'll slowly lose normal motor functions and to become erratic and adrenaline filled and just pumped up like a nuclear zombie type thing. As well as this, you're also filled with ecstasy and just maniacal laughter. You feel happy, but obviously you're not. And all these feelings will cause you to constantly sprint around and act like a crazy person and yell and laugh and scream and all while your body will decay and become yellow and bony and you'll just start to corrode. Bones will stick out of your hands and arms and face and you'll have this weird smile thing carved on you and you'll have the overwhelming desire to share this feeling of happiness by infecting other people too. Your brain thinks you're so happy and excited that it also wants others to think this way too and this is what causes the drive to bite and scratch other people. So yeah, let me know what you think of this entity in the comments below. I think it's a great entity. I think it's terrifying, but I want to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Brugly signing off.